going to use our graphing calculator some more to do box and whisker graphs. I'm going to show you how to find all kinds of things on the graphing calculator that's going to help with statistics. So just like before, please make sure that you stay with me so that you can, I can help you if you need it. All right. So in case you are wondering today, fifth period is being very nice and letting me record. Say hi. Oh. Oh. All right. So today you're going to learn how to use the graphing calculator to find data points for the box and whisker plots. So what I want you to do first is I want you to go to the statistics menu like we've done before. Okay, so remember, we're going to go over there and enter. If you have this, exit till you get to the lists. Okay, and delete everything from your lists. If you don't, how many, if you don't remember, keep exiting till you get this graph count, whatever. That arrow means more, and we're just going to delete all. So delete everything from your lists. I'll give you a second to do that. All right, so now I would like you to go ahead and enter the data that's on your worksheet there into list one. So everyone go ahead. You should know how to do it. Remember, just type in the number and then press enter. So I've entered all of my data. I'll wait for you guys. So now that I have all my data entered, I want to do something with it. And it says for my, me to choose calc. But remember, it's not there. So F6 will give me more. And I want to check choose calc. All right. It's not on this paper. Actually, it is um, if you get an error message. But what I want to do is we're going to set the, this. It's usually the default, but I want to show you how to change it if you need to. So everybody on this menu, okay, I'm going to hit set, which is F6, and I want my data is in list one, so one variable statistics, we're going to go list one. So it should look like this. Now when you're here, we want to go back, so we, remember always to go back, we hit exit, and it should take us back here. Is everybody here? Yeah. Anybody not here? All right, Dylan, are you here? All right, so we're get, we set it for our one variable statistic, so we're going to hit F1. <laughs> All right, so... I feel like I the wrong numbers. When we're looking at um, the statistics, this X bar that's right here is our mean. We say X bar, so this is our mean or our average. Okay. This little thing on mine, it's got an extra N, but yours is this. This is a sigma or a Greek letter, and this is what we call the standard deviation. And the video that you guys have next is all going to be about standard deviation. All right? So standard deviation tells us how spread out data is from the mean. So the higher the standard deviation, the more spread out your data is. As I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of other things as well. So on here, we have for our mean, 
going to let me write on here, is it? Okay, our mean is 19.3. Our standard deviation is 7.8. That N that you see on your calculator is the number of pieces of data. So we had 17 pieces of data. I'm going to scroll down, and you can scroll down as well with the cursor key. Okay. And look, everything we need to make our box and whisker plots are right here. So our minimum value is 10. Our quartile 1 would be our lower quartile, and that is 13. Our median, MED, is 18. Our upper quartile is 22 and a half. And our maximum is 45. So if you look at the range of my data, 45 minus 13 is 32, so it's a pretty big range of data. All right, so these are all of the things that I can find. You can also find the mode. I think on your calculators, the mode is 12 and the number is 1, so that really means that nothing repeated. Okay, so you can just double check. Remember, your mode is what occurs the most. Now, sometimes in a set of data, you have numbers that just seem really far out there right, that don't necessarily belong. Now, there's a mathematical formula for finding outliers, but we're not going to use that mathematical formula. We're going to just take a look at our data and see which one of them you think has an outlier. So what do you think looking at that is an outlier? Jack? 45, 45 is definitely an outlier. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of it from our data. So hit exit on your graphing calculator. Then scroll up until you find 45. Then all you have to do is use the delete key, which is above the multiplication key, and it just gets rid of that number only. So you don't have to delete your whole list and put things in. So now let's take a look at the, very, the stuff for that. It's already set up, so all I have to do, is everybody with me, is hit one variable again. And there it's changed some things. Right, so it's changed my mean. It is now 17.7. My standard deviation is 4.5 approximately, 4.5. We now have 16 pieces of data. Our minimum is the same of 10, if I scroll down. Our lower quartile stayed the same. Our median stayed the same. Our upper quartile became a little bit lower, 21 and a half. And our maximum became a lot lower, it's 24. Reading again. So, notice that some of the things changed and some of them stayed the same. Our standard deviation went from 7.8 to four and a half. That's huge. Remember I said that standard deviation means that the data is not, is the higher the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is, the lower, the closer it is together. And we took that outlier out, which is why we, um, that changes. The mean changed as well, but the median didn't. And a lot of times the median is our better part of data. So what I want to do is I want to put this onto a box and whisker plot. So we're going to put it here. I'm going to show you what it is, but I'll walk you through it. All right, I've made the box and whisker plots ahead of time. Remember that our first point, this is our minimum. This is our lower quartile. 
or Q1. Our median is right there. Our upper quartile here and our maximum here. The top one, if we think about back to our data, would be after we pulled the outlier out and the second would be when we have the outlier in. All right, so now that we've made our box and whisker plot, you can definitely see the bottom one is our first set of data before the 45 is taken out. And that Z, the um, standard deviation was the larger of the standard deviations. So that makes sense. Our data is more spread out and you can see that with the box and whisker plot. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, go ahead and enter this data. We're gonna exit and we're gonna exit again. And then we can go ahead and enter this data into your calculator. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you have your data in, we don't like this menu. So we're going to press over for the arrow that tells us more F6, right? Go to calc. And this time we're going to actually no exit back. Sorry. Let's go to graph. And I want to go to set because we're going to tell it to make us a box and whisker plot. So we're going to hit set and we're going to do graph two. Is everybody here? Does it say stat graph two at the top of your screen? All right, so we're going to exit. And then we're going to hit graph two. Now we're going to actually graph it. When we hit graph two, we get a box and whisker plot. All right, so the other thing that we can do once we have this box and whisker plot is we can just look at it to look at the data. We can do shift, trace, and there it is. It tells us what each of our points are. So my minimum is 15. If I tell it to do more, if I use the cursor and go arrow, it gives me my lower quartile of 20. If I press the cursor to go over again, gives me 23 for the median. It gives me, if I press over again, my upper quartile is 30. And my maximum is 45. Okay. If I, now notice that I don't have the number of pieces of data, I don't have the mean, and I don't have the standard deviation. Because in a box and whisker plot, those are things that we don't find. If I want to find them, let's press exit and exit again. And remember, we're gonna go to calc and one variable, and it will give us everything else. All right. So today we went over box and whisker plots a little bit more, how to use the graphing calculator to find them. Have a great, how about a math-tastic day. Oh